Hey, what's up everyone? Tim Stoddard here. And in this video, I am going to show you the nine main ranking factors to get your Google business profile into the local pack. Let's get started. Somebody asked me, how much emphasis do I have to put on ranking the profile and ranking the website that are attached to the profile? And I thought about it and I thought, you know what? It's, it's even too simplistic just to think of it in terms of those two things. So with that, I put together this outline, the nine ranking factors, the nine ranking factors for Google business profiles. I'm going to walk you through every major ranking factor that impacts your visibility in your Google business profile to get you into the local pack. Uh, this is going to help you whether you are the business owner yourself and you want to get your own Google profile higher in the rankings to get into the local pack or whether you're an SEO agency. And we are going to do this just like I'm doing in my course by showing you firsthand how to do it. This is my wife's business. My wife is a breathwork instructor and I've been kind of like live optimizing her profile as part of the Launchpad course within Agency Clarity. And so in this video, I'm just going to give you like a really short breakdown of everything so that you can use this information and, and run with it. All right, so here we go. The first one, optimize the profile information. So this is pretty easy. If you don't even really know what that means, you go to Google, you click these little buttons right here, and then you click Business Profile Manager. When you do that, if you don't already have your Google business profile, it'll prompt you to create one. And if you do, it'll show it to you. If you have more than one, then it'll give you a list of all of them. But once you get there, it's going to look like this. So you optimize your profile on Google. Google's going to know if the email address on your Gmail account is the admin or even an editor for the profile itself. And so all of these buttons right here, these are the buttons that you, you click on to edit your account. So there's no back end of the account. There's nothing else that you have to log in. It's all done straight through Google. So most of the information is going to be here. You want to put the description in. You want to add some keywords. You want to choose your, your business categories closely. And then you also want to choose your secondary categories. You want to have your contact information, your opening date. If you can get approved for... SMS, I didn't realize that this actually wasn't approved until I just did it. Have your website, have some social profiles, put as much information in this as you possibly can. The real like meat and potatoes of this is going to be right here in the description because this is where you like you, you kind of SEO it. You want to put the keyword in here a couple of times. You only have 750 characters, so it's like it's not that easy. I would really recommend not suggesting the description through Gemini, through their AI tool and, and do it yourself because then you can you can put the location in, the keyword in, um, and some other secondary keywords, you know, like breathwork, breathwork sessions, et cetera. In addition, photos are hugely, hugely important. Whoa, why are these all rejected? I don't even know what happened here. I'm, I'm like learning a lot about my profile. Um, as I'm seeing this, but but this is important as well. Like you want to put your photos in here. Um, you can do a cover photo, and you can add individual photos of the staff and of the facility and all of that. The products I talk about this at length in my course. So the products are actually here. And if you're a service business, you do need to have a website attached to it. This is one of the misconceptions: is that people think that the profile is really all you need but the website is just as important and so we have these services linked through here right and so you can see that this is the service page and you can see that in the product is right here and so you can click on it and you can view it and that brings you to the service page so that's that's very important the local phone number and the address you want to have a legit address a real business address that can get verified not a PO box. And then of course, the website URL. So you can see on the front end of the profile, was it this one? Yeah. You can see on the front end of the profile that all of this information is on here. And it's like continuously more and more like robust. It's, it's like, it's quality information. Okay. Ranking factor number two, citations and directory listings. This is this is most commonly 
what people who are trying to build up their Google business profiles don't think about because they think like, oh, I, I'm, I'm on one, one directory. This is what I need. What does it matter if I'm on other directories? But your NAP, your NAP, your name, address, and phone number, this is how Google stack ranks your Google profile by seeing that like your business with the same NAP is also submitted across other top tier directories. It just gives it some legitimacy. So the tool I like to use is called Bright Local. There's other local ranking tools that I've heard of. Frankly, I don't even really know what other ones are. I've used Bright Local for just about everything. And you can build your citations right here through this tool, the Citation Builder. So Bright Local is great because it has them all listed for you. And if you wanted to, you could easily just submit your information to all of these directories as citations. But if you wanted to, they also have a service where you can just pay to get it done and they'll do it for you. So it's, it's right down here. You can create a citation campaign and Bright Local will submit your information to these ones for you. I really recommend that you do it. It's, it's very worth it. And it, it really like adds up. It, it does have a big impact on, on the amount of traffic and the amount of phone calls and leads that you'll get. Ranking factor number three, step three, is the website and the local landing pages. So we talked about the local landing pages and that's critically important. But what's even more important is the authority of the website. Because when Google looks at the profile, they do look at the authority that is linked through this website button and the amount of backlinks it has. So you can see a really good example of this here. Whereas if I go to the local search grid and I do sort of like a mini audit of the Google profiles that are outranking me, you know, number one has 34 links. Number two has six links. I only have one link to the site to the somaticjewels.com website. So this is like a really important ranking factor. I can't over emphasize how important this is, especially because most people don't pay attention to it. They think like, I just need to get people to my profile. What does it matter what my website is? But build up your website, spend time on your website, like write blog posts, get listed on other directories, get backlinks, on other websites. If you're wondering how to get backlinks, Ahrefs has a free backlink checker. So right, if I go here and I go to the listing that is number one, right? So I go here and I go to the website. Okay, so this, this woman has 36 links to her website. Well, maybe I can get some of those links. So I'll go to the backlink checker um, this one is like spam, spam, spam. This one looks okay. All right. This one looks super legit. Sliding scale RLT practitioners. Exactly. Okay. So um, this is the directory. And if I wanted to, I could become a member here. I'd probably have to pay for it. I don't know exactly how much become a member. I can check it out monthly. So $5 a month. You can me, I get to pay for this really powerful backlink. So you see how I just did that. You know, I just audited the website and I looked for some other, some opportunities. I could probably find one here. Um, Almond creative. No. So this is the company that built her website. So I'm not surprised that she has the backlink there. It's probably in, in like the portfolio or something. Yeah, and you know, a lot of these like aren't even really powerful links. So I'm looking at this and I'm 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 pretty optimistic in my ability to generate really good links here. Oh well actually I just kind of skipped a, a step. Um step three is the website and the local pages themselves. Like you have to have a website, and then step four is generating backlinks to the website and to the actual Google business profile page. Okay, step five, reviews and reputation management. Man, reviews are everything. Once you really start to stack up reviews, it's almost impossible for other people to outrank you. One of the ways that I encourage people to do this is to make a business card, make a little postcard. You know, let's say that you're a local consignment shop or you're a coffee shop and somebody had like a great experience or you recognize them being a customer for your first time. You could say to them, hey, 
fill out this little review. I'll give you your first cup of coffee for free. You can put this QR code right here on a postcard. You know, you can write, click it, save this QR code, put it on a postcard. You know, maybe if you're a clothing store, uh, like a lo local consignment shop, you can put the postcard in with the bag, like as they walk out of the store with their item in the bag, say like a little thank you. And then when they had a great experience and they get home, they see their thank you note, they take a, a picture of the QR code and they go directly to that link where they can share their five-star review. Five-star reviews don't come for free. When you see businesses that have a lot of five-star reviews, it's because they actively hunted for them. So please do that. Okay, step number six, proximity, relevance, and prominence. This is not something you can totally control because the way Google Business Profile works is you're going to rank locally for where you are. You know, so this is just the, these are like little quarter mile grids basically. And so it's harder and harder to rank for something the further and further away the person is from the business. However, you can still take advantage of that because you can work with local municipalities. You, you can get backlinks to like the dot govs on in your area, in your neighborhood. Let's say there's like an event going on. Maybe you live near a park and there's like a, a yoga event by the park. Well, you should approach the people putting on the event and somehow get listed on their website because it's it's not just that you got the backlink, it's that you got the backlink within their proximity. So that stuff is all really, really important. Like Google Business Profile, even though it's digital, it still likes to see you like involved in the community and they have they have ways to figure that out. So yeah, get involved in the community and it's 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 great. It's hugely important. Okay, regular posts and engagement. So Google business is not like Facebook, but it also is kind of like Facebook. So if you have this here, add an update, you can continuously add content to your profile. So you can take pictures of events and put them in here. And then when you post it, there'll be like a timeline down here, right underneath the reviews. You know, th this content, I wouldn't necessarily consider it something that people are gonna like see and interact with and engagement and engage with, although sometimes they will, especially if you add an offer, you know, or you create an event directly through your Google profile. Like this is all really, really great stuff to do. The more you can make your profile like an all encompassing like business, what do they call them? Like cork boards, you know, where you have like announcements and information and samples and uh, giveaways. That stuff is like hugely, hugely important. And you do that by creating updates, but regardless, like treat it like social media. Like you want to see other people interacting with your content on your timeline through this add update button, but also understand that it's not an engagement tool. What you're doing here is you're just sending Google signals so that they see that you're a legitimate business who is like active. You're actively creating new products and services and interacting with, with your local community. Okay. This brings us to step eight behavioral and engagement signals. So this is probably the most complicated. And frankly, this isn't something that I spend a whole lot of time with, but I definitely audit all of the Google business profiles that I manage like once a month. And when I say I audit, you know, once your profile gets pretty well established, you'll be able to see, you know, it's a shame that I didn't realize that all of my pictures were rejected for no reason, but you'll be able to see like how many views this picture got, right? So get rid of the pictures that don't have a lot of views and try to find like a common theme and add more pictures that did get a lot of views. In addition, you'll be able to see, I mean, if you really wanted to, you can get pretty crazy with it where on your products, you could dynamically change the phone number that is listed here or even if you click through the website let's say that your website has a phone number like a contact you could rotate it so that every time somebody called this phone number you knew that the click actually came from google my business because that phone number is attached to here there's something called call tracking metrics i do this a lot because of my my lead generation business so i, I actually understand like phone numbers and tracking phone numbers really well 
it's not necessary for everybody, but I'm just trying to give examples of like, like you can optimize your profile pretty simply. Like you can see what people are engaging in through your backend performance tool and you can just get rid of the things that aren't working and try to do more of the things that are working. And the more you optimize it, the more, the better results you'll get. All right, last but not least, I put this here to remind everybody that it's not a set it and forget it type thing. Is if you, the way I always explain it or I think about it is it's kind of like walking up a downward escalator. Like you have to keep moving in order to go up. And the second that you stop moving, you decline. So once you like have your profile optimized, once you have a system to get reviews, once you've created all your local landing pages and you link them through as products, right? Once you've developed like a content system on your Google business profile, that's great. Keep doing it. I've seen endless, endless times people get to number one, you know, and they, they think, okay, I own it now. And so then they stop. And then once they stop, somebody else beats them. You don't want that to happen. Once you own the top spot, for all your different keywords in your Google business profile, you want to keep them. And in order to keep them, you have to continuously optimize. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm thrilled with the amount of interest and excitement I'm getting on my YouTube channel about Google business profiles of all the things. I'm going to continue to, to create this kind of content because in my opinion, this is the best business that people can start. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment and I will answer each one individually. Please smash that subscribe button and I will see you on the next one. See ya.